Welcome to TL Physics and good evening and today I am going to be talking about Young's double slit um, experiment. Now the derivation of this is not pertinent to the AQA syllabus but it does help explain what the hell is going on. So Young's double slit is when light goes through a gap and in fact it's going to go through two gaps and they both diffract. And in the process of going through two separate gaps, it's almost like making two separate sources um, of light. So if you think about it, if you get a colander or anything like that, you put water in, you have one stream go in and multiple streams come out. And that, that's what's happening. So light is coming in to these slits from one source and it's being split into two. Now, we can say that these two streams of light are acting on their own, they're independent at this point. And what happens is these streams of light will travel through space and when they get to the wall at the end, they will interfere depending on are they meeting in phase? So are they both meeting at trough, peak to peak or trough to trough? Or are they meeting an antiphase or somewhere in between? Are they meeting with constructive interference or destructive interference? Now, Young was very specifically looking at what was happening with these two waves. And what he noticed was there was this pattern of bright bit and dark bit and bright bit and dark bit. And we sort of came to some mathematical rearranging at this point. So I'm just going to explain what's happening. So these are my two sources. I'm going to draw a red wave and a blue wave. So when they come out, they travel to the screen. And this one is going to go one, two, three, four, five, six waves until it reaches the screen. This one is also going to go one, two, three, four, five, six waves before it reaches the screen. So they're going to reach the screen in phase. So they reach in phase here. which means you get a maxima. And this one, where they are meeting, because they both travelled the same distance, they're going to meet this point, it's called the central maxima, because it's the central point, because they've both travelled the same. Now, what Young noticed is that you had a bright bit, and then a dark bit, then you had another bright bit again. So here, I've got my wave, and from this point to here, it's travelled one, two, three, four five, six, seven waves. The red is going to have to travel farther, or further, do apologise, it's going to travel much further. And in fact, if I draw it on here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, really sorry for the diagram there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight it's going to travel one wavelength more. It has what we call a path difference of one wavelength. So if my blue travelled one metre and the red one travelled 1.2 metres to get to this first maxima, I know my wavelength is 0.2 metres. At the second maxima, the path difference between the two waves is two wavelengths. At the third maxima, so the third one, three part wavelengths, so on and so forth. So these lights are coming through here and they're acting as basically like having two torches. They get to the positions here. So the central maxima is where they both travelled the same distance. The first maxima is where one's travelled one wavelength further and so on and so forth. Now this brings us on to a bit more about what Young actually did. What Young did is he was looking at the relationship between how far they would go and 
sort of the gaps that were between them. So if I draw this here, so this is the central maxima, I'm going to call that CM, and I call this the first maxima here. We've got a lovely little triangle here. Okay. This distance between the central maxima and the first maxima is known as the fringe width, or W. This is D. This is the distance between the where the slits has been separated, the light has been separated, and the screen. And I'm going to tell you now that this theta is very small. And I'm going to make a little bit of an approximation. And I'm going to call this D as well. In fact, I'm just going to call it D-ish. It, it, it's almost D, because this angle is so tiny. Okay? So I know that sine theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I know that sine theta equals the fringe width over D. I'm going to call it D now instead of D-ish. Okay. If I... I'm now just going to sketch some lines. Here. If I drew a line like this, the one that makes a right angle, so at this point here, this is an isosceles triangle. This is the extra distance that this wave from here traveled. And we know that as the wavelength. This bit here, the gap between this slit and this slit is S, known as the slit separation. And I have an angle here. I have another right angle triangle. So again, sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which equals lambda over s. And what Jung said is that these triangles were similar that these angles were in fact the same. You can see videos uh, by uh, maths videos, for example, on TL Maths, about similar triangles. But as you stretch a triangle, its proportions stay intact. So the angle would stay the same. So, Young assumed this. And he worked out, if he went, oh, this is sine theta, and this is sine theta, that they're equal. So he had lambda s over s equals w over d which leads us to the formula for Young's double slit. The fringe width, the gap between the centre and the first maxima is the wavelength times by how far you are from the screen divided by how big the gaps are. The important thing to remember for this is that this only works for Young's double slit equation. You cannot use this on a diffraction grating or a single slit. You can only use this formula if you see the word double slit or two slits. An example question would look like this. Uh, double slit with a spacing of 25 millimeters has a laser of 700 nano, 790 nanometers shone through it. A screen 
is two meters away, what is the distance between the central and first maxima? So a double slit with a spacing of 25 millimetres has a laser of 700 nanometres shone through it. A screen is two metres away. What is the distance between the central and the first maxima? What is the fringe width? So I'm going to use my formula. W equals lambda d over s and I'm going to input my information. So I've got 790 times 10 to the minus 9 for nano. Be aware I'm not putting it into standard form, I'm literally just replacing nano, the little n, with 10 to the minus 9. That's okay to do. Times by 2 divided by 25 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm going to put that to a calculator now. So I'm just going to grab my trusty calculator and put it in. So it's 790 times 10 to the minus 9 times 2 divided by 25 times 10 to the minus 3. And I'm going to get an answer of 6.32 times 10 to the minus 5 metres. It's going to be tiny, millimetres. Okay, Probably not observable by the human eye but potentially observable by computers and things like that. This is Young's double slit, only used when you have two slits. All it is, is the interference of waves when they travel through a gap. This is interference due to diffraction. The fact that they are travelling slightly farther than the other, but their arriving in phase produces maximas. The dark bits in the middle, of course, are when they're reaching an antiphase. In the next one, we'll be talking about diffraction grating. This is when we have uh, slits that are more than two. So we're talking about multiple other things, and we'll be talking about that in the diffraction grating. <laughs>